Yo, what's good? You just missed one of the dopest black combat events in all of New York City, but don't worry, I got you covered because we're going to talk about all of it right now. This video is brought to you by my patrons over on patreon.com slash haptoons. My ex-wife told me that I need to start doing vlogs more often, especially outdoors, so here we are. So forgive me for the unkempt nature of it if the sounds are a little off if the audio is off or uh the visuals i'm just learning this as i go i'm trying my best so uh thank you for 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 watching this i do appreciate it you already know the vibes it's your guy all the way from bed sty havo and we're going to talk about the amazing experience i had at the black comic book festival at the schaumburg in harlem here in new york city I'm not typically a convention, a Comic-Con kind of guy. I, I typically lean towards, you know, art exhibitions, galleries, and museum spaces. But when you combine New York culture and all the amazing black talent that we have in the comic industry, then there's no way I can refuse it. Plus, this was a great opportunity to catch up with a lot of old friends and colleagues that I haven't seen in, like, four years. <laughs> In case you didn't know, we are incredibly blessed here in New York to have so many great institutions to go to, whether it is libraries, museums, galleries, and any other venues for just, you know, fun and recreation. And uh, the Schaumburg Center is no different. Um, it's a beautiful space in Harlem, and I've seen some of the, probably some of the best exhibitions uh, pertaining to black art and, and, and black entertainment there than anywhere else. So the Black Comic Book Festival, I'm going to read a little blurb here. Um, this year actually marked the 11th year, bringing together animators, blurbs, bloggers, cosplay lovers, fans, families, illustrators, independent publishers, and writers to celebrate black comic books and graphic novels and provides a platform to get the works directly to readers. This annual event features panel discussions, workshops, cosplay showcases, and highlights the works of creators from across the country. Hashtag Shamcom 2023. I was able to, you know, meet some new people, uh, shake hands with some amazing talent, um, honestly, some extraordinary people out there. And um, it was just something about being around people who look and talk like you, that's very comforting and uh, revitalizing in a sense. Because to be honest, to be perfectly honest with y'all, I'm gonna keep it above with you. I haven't been going out that much. Other than going to do my workshops and teach my classes, I haven't been going outside the last uh, two or three years. And that was due to uh, COVID fear and becoming somewhat of a recluse. So I kind of like shut myself off outside of you know, maybe streaming or, you know, posting on social media, but I really wasn't going outside. So this is my first time really being outside, outside like that, especially so far out from, from Brooklyn. I took an Uber up there of all things too, because I was just like, I'm not getting on the train. I don't feel like, I don't feel like taking the train. I don't know. Maybe that's just me because like the train is cool, but now that I'm older, I'd rather not. Hey, if you made it this far, that means you really enjoy my content. You like my voice, you like my face or the beard or anything else going on in this video right now, which means which means I can ask you to hit that like button. That like button down there helps out the video a ton, helps out the channel a ton, puts us in front of more faces, more eyes, and that means we can build a bigger community. So like this video, comment below your go-to comfort show. Mine is Parks and Recreation. No matter how many times I watch that, that show, I'm always laughing. I'm always, always, always laughing. For real. The funny thing is, my plan, my original plan on Saturday, um, I was supposed to go to the Schaumburg for like maybe an hour or two, and then I was going to head over to the Guillermo del Toro exhibition, but I was having such a good time that I ended up staying the whole day, and then eventually I ended up working the table with my friend, who is basically like my little sister, Dr. Kaylin, who you may have seen on the Art Block, which is a, a series I created last year, uh, interviewing amazing black artists around, you know, around the world, around the globe, around the country. And it's been a minute, like it's actually been a minute since they did this because of, you know, obviously COVID the last three years, they didn't really have a festival, they didn't have a convention. So this was the first in-person thing in, in, in the last three years. So you already know it was just packed to the rafters like all day, both days. It was two days, it was Saturday, it was Friday and Saturday. I went on a Saturday um, 
and it was just honestly lovely to be outside and be around people, be around uh, artists, be around people who love art, and just be around black people too, like skin folk, man, kin folk. It was great to be out there, honestly, and I saw so many people that I haven't seen in, in years, just being able to like chop it up with them, like nothing ever changed, nothing ever happened, you know? Um, it was nice to just be in that, uh, to experience that, to see all of my friends and colleagues doing their thing and, and winning, you know, and making sales and, and meeting new clients or uh, collaborating with each other. You know, you have people who, there's this, uh, the, the writer for the Harriet Tubman Demon Slayer wants to work with my friend who does amazing, you gotta check her out, Gigi Murakami. She does amazing uh, illustrations and Japanese style comic books. Like it's, it was a dope experience all around. I think one of the, the most important pieces here is that events like this are a reminder that black people, black artists are not alone. Um, I think it's it's hard to, or I think it's easy to forget that black people are everywhere. Where you're, where we are ubiquitous, right? We're in every industry. We're doing amazing things, but we often need that reminder to know that like we we're not alone. We're not we're not, we're not just doing this by ourselves. Coming together for these events um, and seeing everyone just succeed and progress through their art or through their businesses or through anything that they're doing, whether it's with uh, comics, animation, film, TV, gaming, you know, and it's just a wonderful... It's just a wonderful thing to experience. I'm gonna keep it real with y'all again though. Even though it was a beautiful space, beautiful time, there were a few things where it was just like, ah. It could be just a, a me thing, like my own personal icks, but I just feel like if there is an event being hosted for the, the sanctity of everyone's comfort and their noses, I think there should be a policy where people are required to wear some sort of deodorant, whether it's a natural or aluminum field or whatever the case may be, because there were some cats out there humming, bro, I ain't gonna lie. It was humming for a little while on all three floors. At first, it was so bad. At first, I thought it was me. I, I stood by um, Kaylin and I was like, yo, is that me? And she sniffed herself, I was like, nah, you good. But it was just like, it was maybe one person or a bunch of people that's 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 one thing that's one reason why i do not like the whole convention thing because with the convention comes a different type of crowd and i'm not saying this is a bad crowd it's just it's uncomfortable for me personally um and then there was also like this over regulation of the space where there was like the security guard saying oh you can't go downstairs but there was like only like so he would say it was pat but when I went downstairs, because I was working the table, so I was allowed to go back down. When I went downstairs, there was only like maybe a small handful of people before like that rush came in. So I was just like, why are you bogarting the space like that? But I don't know. That's just just little nitpicks here and there. Um, everything else was cool. The music was good. All the panels were amazing. You got some heavy hitters there, like Tim Builder. Um, and then there was food. There was there, they fed. That was really dope. You don't you don't see that a lot either. Like they fed all the vendors, like everybody that was was vending or, or cosplaying or participated in the event, uh, whether they were a speaker or a panelist, they all were fed food. And it wasn't like some some school lunch shit either. It was like real legit like sandwiches, and pizza, and, and, and stuff like that. Like a box. It was like a big box, which was dope. I did manage to uh, cop some stuff from the show, um, which I should actually go get right now. Be right back. <laughs> You're gonna have to forgive me because I'm filming this with the uh, front facing camera, so things are gonna be in reverse, but uh, here's what I picked up, a few things. So this is Rebirth, the art book for uh, Sean Aline's Pyrographic Studios. And the best thing about it, one of the best things about it is that he drew me on the spot. Like that's dope. Look at that. That's look. That looks like something I would do for my redrawn portrait series. That's amazing. Then we have uh, Dream Fury comics. Um, this is issue number two of Crescent City Monsters. The artwork in this is amazing. Uh, it's sealed, so I'm not gonna open it up just yet. Uh, but maybe one day I'll show you guys what's inside, or you can buy it yourself. Go go find them online. Dream Fury comics. 
Uh, here's another book from my boy Greg Anderson Elise. This is his comic, It's Not Now the Wear Spider. Let me see if you can see that. Look at the art, man. Shout outs to the artist, uh, Sean Hill, I believe is his name. I'm not sure. Yeah, who's the artist for this? Because it's amazing. Hold up. This is a lot bigger than I thought it was. The artwork in this is amazing. This was already unsealed, so the packaging was already open, so I can open this. But yeah, dude, like, this was an amazing, amazing time. And the best part of all, um, which is cool, I got to see some children's books. This is from uh, Cesare Murphy, who you may know from Virtuous Con. So she is an amazing, amazing writer. She does a lot of sci-fi, but she also writes children's books. So if you need some for your school or for your own kids, definitely check her out, hit her up. I'll have, I'll, I'll try to get as many links in the description as possible to everybody here so you can purchase for yourself. But definitely check all these amazing black curators out for real, for real. I think this needs to be stated immediately because I don't think she gets a credit that she deserves. Kadia Tu Tubman, she's the program director at the Schomburg, and she basically put the whole event together. She's been doing this for 11 years. Like I said, this is the, this is the 11th annual Black Comic Book Festival, and like honestly, shout outs to her because she put together a fantastic and phenomenal event. And I think that, you know, this is something that a lot of us need and a lot of us uh, want and have desired for a long time. This type of event, this type of structure, uh, being able to be in New York. And, and meet other people just like you who are creating comics, who are writing comics, who are creating just art in general, man. Like, it was just a dope, 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 dope time. But yeah, that, that whole experience, Saturday, just staying there the whole day, uh, hanging, out, hanging out with my friends, um, and just experiencing all that black art excellence has really uh, reinvigorated me. It's really reinvigorated me to uh, get going on a lot of ideas I've been sitting on for years and some things that I've tried before but have failed at them. But uh, yo, it's gonna be crazy, it's gonna be a good year. And my goal next year, my goal next year, I wanna be on one of those panels. So I'm definitely gonna work on that. You may see me there. You may see me at uh, the Schomburg next year speaking on the panel. So I'll let you know if it happens. Yeah, so that's going to do it for this video. I do like filming outside. I don't know how the audio is going to turn out. I'm going to try to, like, you know, tweak it a little bit if I can. Uh, if this is something that you want to see more of, you know, you can let me know that in the comments as well. These freaking earbuds is crazy, though. Um, I'll have an illustration up by the time this video is out, so you should definitely be looking at that as well. You know the vibe, you know the drill. Links in the, in the description below. Um, blah 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 you know but until the next video until next time stay rad stay dope stay gold we out